Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a new installment of the Reviews Roundup, where we are going over albums and EPs that I've reviewed and rated from the past month, and that month being November, November 2023, so let's get into it. First up, we've got Exod with the Collide EP. Uh, Exod is riding a fine line between really solid, colorful, melodic dubstep and boring derivative melodic dubstep. Uh, in the end, though, it's a solid sound and style that I have have heard a bunch from other artists and maybe better from other artists, so I think I'll just give it a Bowtide 6. Then we'll move into the uh, Marshmallow Sugar Poppy album. Uh, yes, it's bland. Yes, it's boring. Yes, it sucks. Uh, but I don't think it's his worst ever, I will say. Uh, there are some moments of life, albeit very few, uh, but enough to where I can't say that this is a new low for Marshmallow. But I will give it a Bowtide 3. Then we got Peekaboo with Eyes Wide Open. Peekaboo had a pretty breakout year, I would say, this year in 2023. and was all topped off by this really solid debut album. Uh, with the effects of Skrillex still lingering strong, Eyes Wide Open feels like a spiritual successor to Skrillex's quest for fire. Uh, starting off initially strong, the first half of this record is some of Peekaboo's best yet. But while the songs in the back half aren't bad, they tend to feel a little bit more like dumbed-down version of the earlier singles that we heard from the top half. And it will give it a Bowtide 7. Up next, we've got Pendulum with the Anima EP. After their second pseudo comeback EP, uh, Pendulum is yet again trying to scratch the itch that they once did to pitiful success. Uh, once the kings of anthemic drum and bass, this new EP is a collection of relatively tame and derivative tunes. Where do they even go from here? I just don't know where they go as a group, uh, but I will give it a Bowtide 5. We've got Alan Walker with Walker World. Uh, almost a decade later, and so much of Alan Walker's music sounds the same, if not worse. Uh, it's boring dance pop that tries to pretend that it's for the real EDM enjoyers, um, but it's just more of the same. And I will give it a Bowtide 4. Then we've got Duskus with the Healers Volume 1, a brilliantly consistent garage EP. Individually, the songs are pretty great, and as a collective, they create a nice little neat atmosphere. Fun tone, really liked the exploration of sound that Duskus did well on this one, and I'll give it a Bowtide 7. Then we've got Fool with Machine. Uh, over a decade into the game, and Fool is finally here with his debut album. Uh, his signature dark synth style is on full display, but also with a fun mix-up of techno and mid-tempo throughout. Uh, this record is super consistent in its production quality and mixing, making for a fantastic straight-through listening experience. And I will give it a Bowtide 7. Then we've got Kid with the Past Life EP, a fairly standard EP from a kid perspective. Um, nice melodic tones and melodies with complimentary vocals, simple and effective, I would say. This will score a bow tied seven. Then we've got Keys and Crates with Intention. Uh, diving fully into garage territory with this record, uh, Keys and Crates feels like a little lost in their sound here. Uh, there just isn't quite anything about this record that feels new, fresh, or special. It kind of just is. Um, the best tracks are all right, and the worst ones, I think, are pretty bad. But I will give, I will give it a Bowtide 5. Then we got Mord Fustang with Red Data, a simple and engaging melding of Electro House and Synthwave. Uh, each track here is unique enough to stand alone despite the common futuristic tones all throughout. And I will give this a Bowtide 7. We've got Cyclops with the Tearjerker EP. Uh, <laughs> quite the explosive uh, rhythm EP here, especially considering how much intentionally dead space there is throughout. Um, there are some moments of rhythm brilliance here, but a majority is kind of more standard paint by number sounds. We'll give it a Bowtide 5. Then we've got AMR with Familiar Faces, uh, one of the strongest chilled out house records I have heard to date. While a majority of the tracks um, that are of melodic house, uh, AMR does bounce around a variety of house sub-genres, uh, making for uh, quite a diverse track list, despite it still being like melodic house. Uh, this album is down to earth, real, and beautiful. I will give it a Bowtide 7. And we've got Flux Pavilion with the Flux Averse EP, a fairly serviceable project from Flux Pavilion as he reaches back into the archive of his music for sound design. Um, it's an old school sounding project that just didn't quite grab my attention today as much as it may have in the past, but it will score Bowtide 6. Then we've got Amnes with uh, Extor, I want to say. I'm pretty sure it's a French word, and I'm Canadian and didn't really learn that much French. Uh, but uh, yeah, Amnes is continuing their streak of niche hybrid trap excellence. Well, not as strong as Nur, I think, was. Uh, it's still a solid EP with some nice highlights, and it will score Bowtide 7. Then we've got Murata with Crown of Torment. Uh, Murata 
yeah, definitely has a distinct sound and style, and one that's really not for me. I think this is far from his best work. I think the mix-up of tempo changes all throughout also were a bit, they threw me off a ton, and yeah, not enjoy this one as much. I'll give it a Bowtide 4. Oh gosh, speaking of stuff I didn't enjoy as much, uh, Steve Aoki, Hero Quest 2 Double Helix. What are we even doing here, Mr. Aoki? Like, you've become merely a vessel for other people to release their tunes with, regardless of genre or quality. Um, This album is just a compilation of all the worst parts of the music industry right now. Short tracks, horrible writing, no narrative through lines, just an absolute mess. I will give this a bow tied too. Then we got Quadeca with a Scrapyard 3, the best of the Scrapyard projects yet. Um, well, yes, these are all cut songs from one project or another. Quadeca seems to be in perfect form throughout these three tracks, uh, blending together his experimental hip-hop production and industrial style rapping. And I will give it a Bowtide 8. Then we've got Apache with Antagonist. Apache is a force to be reckoned with. His third studio album, Antagonist, is another grand exploration of hybrid trap and orchestral sound design. With a touch of garage and drum step throughout this record, this LP is both new territory for Apache while still right in his wheelhouse. Um, it's hard to say if this is his best work or not. Regardless, it's awfully close. It will score a Bowtide 8. They've got Overwork with the More EP. Uh, Overwork has yet to really change their core sound in the last decade, and that's because it's working. Um, With cinematic tones and simple beats, More is a solid addition to an already stellar discography. Uh, not Not adding anything stylistically new to that discography, but more of a good thing is never a bad thing. Right? Well, let's go our bow tied seven. And we've got Zensei with Lucid, the Lucid EP. Uh, Solid lo-fi, but nothing really outside of the usual chill tones. It is lo-fi. Then that's that. I will score both at six. And finally, we've got Inzo with the Side Quest EP. Uh, taking a slight detour from his usual sound, uh, Inzo brings us a quick three track house EP um, to shockingly good results. Uh, each track is a slightly different flavor of house, and with some great mixing, this EP was uh, really quite solid. It will score both at seven. Let me know what you think of any and all of these records, EPs, whatever mixtapes in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. And uh, other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.